the Irish Trotter Podcast with Mark and Sean Kane. Here we are, folks, back by popular demand. To be honest now, I really thought that uh, my career as co-host in the podcast was, was over, but we're back. But uh, we're happy to be here, me and Mark, and uh, the first race of the day was the opening trot, which went to the favourite, which was Darren Tillman's Flat Tour, which is four-horse race, fairly cat and mouse here in this. Darren, he got all the fractions right, 32 to the quarter, 104 to the half, 37, 29 to the mile, and absolutely rocked him on home there in a bit of 101 last half. Very impressive. It was a horse that I liked last year, Mark. Um, one thing he does look at now this year, he looks a touch touch more drivable, um, where he was a bit troublesome last year, where this open season now he's he's a win, a win second and a win again. Newcomer to the to the to race in Laurel there was Dusty Jewel from John Richardson, the Meta Ranch team. Looked a little bit erratic away, got in behind them, followed him around and um looked like he was gonna run on for fourth there, but he just punched up and beat Simon Duggan home there with Fortune de Genoi, which also was his was his first run of the season. Um but yeah, as I said, you know, fairly cat and mouse tactics. Darren got to the front, dictated and ran on. Yeah, grand to be back in this slightly new format of not having to sit in front of the Zoom camera for an hour. It's going to make it a little bit easier to, to work in between and um, to work in between work and or driving and stuff like that. So it's grand. Yeah, um, like you say, once once Darren got to the front here, then this kind of the race was the race the, the race was kind of put to bed almost straight away. It was just going to be down to him to get his fractions right. Uh, for the tour, has been was really impressive. Like you say, he, was, he looked very drivable, but very level. Uh, he got his fraction spot on down to the mile in 2 9, quickened just before he got to the mile and sort of put three or four lengths on the field straight away. But, um, the, you know, they were just they, they were they were kind of struggling to stru- struggling to get to him after that. But, um, good run by Vanderillo Poya in second, two first run of the year for Fortune, you know, and Dusty GL. I'm sure they're going to come on for what they done. But, yeah, look, Flatour is really impressive again. And, like, in the Red John meeting in Cork last year, he was possibly one of the most impressive horses on the card. Um, he looked right back up to that kind of form there on Sunday. He he looks like a horse who could go right through the grades if he's gonna keep if he's gonna keep if he can keep them levels up, them performance levels up over the course of the season. Um, but yeah, look, he, he when when he crossed the line after a one one last half, he looked he could have went another lap again. He, he's a very thorough dower stayer. Um, and like you said, he looks very drivable. I'm sure they're gonna have a bit of fun with this lad over the course of the season. Yeah, as you say, Marco, he definitely he definitely could rock on up through them grades. The way the way he won that race there, and especially down at the Red John there, like he just broke everybody's hearts. But um, him and the Darren are like, I suppose you could say. Just before we move on to the next race there, Mark, now I want to actually give a little bit of credit to the lads there behind the the IHRA website there for um, they're after opening their game big time here now with posting the results. Uh, on the on the website there now you've got you know all, all of our results here all our split times as well as all the photo finishes here so you know it makes our job a hell of a lot easier and it's great information and everything is exact and correct and yeah fair play to them as well as um they have the stewards reports up there now last week's report is missing so i'm sure the lads will get onto that now that i'm after mentioning it but it's great to see great to see it, it definitely is and you know it's good that everybody can know what's going on yeah, exactly. And look, I think it's important for people going forward that that is there, um, to be able to to be able to go check up the results, um, see the see, see the earnings of horses, see the times the horses have gone, even from from a punter perspective for for spectators, it's, it's it's good to have them kind of details on hand. And yeah, fair play, it's a it, it's a big push forward for the OHRA. Right? Second race on the card was the four star grade F trots five lined up to post here in this. We had um. We had Valiant the Gam, Umbraticus, uh, Brutonor, Batingo, and Silvano Bello. My pre race fancy here was Brutonor. I thought he was very well in. Fortunately, he galloped away from the gate. Um, Silvano Bello led them away, which he's, which he's done many, many times around Port Marnock in his career. Valiant the Gam was away in the rail in second. Sean, you were on the outside with Batingo. Um, Umbratica was, was giving Patch kind of hard time for most of the way around. And. Yeah, after after your mistake on the corner, Sean has just left two, two, two in kind of the pole position. Savano Bello on was kind of was driving him conservatively. I'd say I think him and Valley in the game would both probably be better moilers than mile and a half horses these days. Um so they were happy enough to let a steady pace go down. They rolled into the mile in two twelve. 
Um, Brute now made a lot of ground back up in the mile, just just coming through the mile pole to get back on the the, the heels of these two leaders. But yeah, look, they, they, these two are happy enough to go steady away. Uh, they got onto the bottom of the back straight. Billy kind of poked out with Valiant the Gam without ever really committing his horse. You know, he just wanted to, he just wanted to get Silvano Bello to work a small bit. And yeah, coming around the corner, Silvano Bello kind of, kind of, kind of robbed the length of two on the corner, such a straight level trotter. Um, but Valiant the Gam was always kind of, Valiant the Gam was always kind of looking, looking to be traveling well with Billy. You know, he was looking well within himself. Brutner made up a lot of ground, but that had maybe told by the time he got to the bend. You know, he was probably starting to run an empty a little bit. And yeah, as they turned in, uh, Billy, B- Billy kind of urged, urged Valiant to go ahead. And look, he just got himself got himself up at the right time um, in, in a relative sprint finish. And it was a good run by Savannah Bello in second. A great old horse he is, 15 years old. What a, what, what a smashing money earner he's been and just a smashing horse he's been for the lads. Um, a good drive by Owen from the front end and yeah uh, another winner for Billy and another winner for Valley in the game another fine serve for the, for the stable yeah that's it Mark you, you fairly described that one there stride for stride it was a slow mile they came home good uh, Valley in the Gaham and Silvana Bello have, two, have been two absolute great servants for their connections I suppose the only bad thing about doing this podcast is <laughs> when your horses go bad or you drive bad you have to watch the replay and talk about it <laughs> on this occasion for me anyway I tried to step on out the gate there to see where I was coming and uh, wasn't getting top that's for sure anyway and uh, too too much gas trying to take back and that's it and I just got around the turn and a dirty rotten gallop too to make it worse and uh, after that then of course I was disqualified but that was my day over Umbriacta yeah she's she's troublesome but when she gets it right she certainly does today wasn't her day Brutner, yeah, he's been racing away. Mile and a half definitely would have suited him for me, but unfortunately made that skip away. Got back into the race, but it was just between the one and two horse, really, and Silvana Bello, he's been a super servant. Good joy by Owen. I suppose he probably would have hoped he would have had a little bit more kick coming home, but by the end of the game, having enough in hand. Yeah, exactly right. Yeah, exactly right. Um, I, I look, Silvano Bello, he, he, he's going to get his winners over the course of the season, is he? When, he's, when he can put in performances like that, you know, like another, that's, we're running with small fields and that at the minute um for another couple of weeks until until the cards fill up again but he's he's gonna get his win here and there and he's gonna pay his way for the season and you know it's it, it, it was a good move and kind of an old brainer by Murphy's to keep him in and, and keep him racing away and I'm sure he'll, he'll give on plenty of fun over the season and he's gonna knock a win or two of them somewhere and yeah value in the game you can you can definitely see him find another win or two as well over the course of the season great to see these old horses that have been racing a few years keep knocking around and Keep getting the wins. Yeah, that's it, Mark. Like as you say, the fields are small. Like it is early in the year. You can't really blame people either. Like with current circumstances at the moment, like people, you know, last year we we didn't get racing until June. You know, people could have thought that was the same thing was happening. Like you see what was happening with the point to points and stuff like that. You know, you can't blame people. But what you do have to say is we raced into December. It's the latest we've ever raced, and we started earlier than we ever have. So it really is a credit to everybody involved. How we are growing. Yeah, like, you know, we're three weeks in now, going on to our fourth week now. People have had plenty of chance to say, hang on a minute, we are racing here. Let's get going. So, um, I guarantee you now, next two, over the next two weeks now, you'll see the numbers jumping up drastically. Third race of the day here was the only pace of the day. Meta Branch Roman got the win here for Darren Timlin and Rockin' Johnny Burns as the owner and trainer. It's great to see Johnny getting a good bit of success, success out of this horse. He's always been a good horse, lifetime best of 58. He's actually the fastest horse in the race on form um, Finbar Quill awesome dude dictated the race blasted out the gate 30.8 30. to the first quarter but I was actually talking to young Finbar today and he, he reckons he tapped the brakes a little bit too much it was quite hard to quite hard to get going there he, but 103 to the half Walter was having none of it he pulled on a first up they went went to war a little bit down the back straight and um, Finbar just got himself copper toe but it was an absolute yeah no it was a crack, crack of a race this one Um Forum came to the water together. Good drive by JR. He, he got the good trip the whole way around. He he tipped down the stray. He, he headed he headed Walter and he headed Finbar. It looked like it was all over, but Meta Ranch Roman just kept on trucking. Good drive from Darren here from the back. Pace and drive. Got uh got forced out three wide by a man in red and black colours, but sure we'll forget about that. And um yeah, but now as to say, absolutely flew home and it's great for Johnny and the lads.
yeah, like they blasted out. I know that I know the quad that was 30.8, which is a fairly sedate first quad that for pacers, but I'd say the first eight was electric and, and Finbar really tapped the brakes and yeah, look he was <laughs> it was going fairly slow from just before the quarter until um just just before the quarter to the to, to let's say the the when he got to the bridge, maybe the far side of the track before Walter pulled, you know, he was going I I bet he definitely had a slow down to about two sixteen, two seventeen speed for that little stretch. Um yeah, which 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 invited the pressure from Walter. He was always gonna get moving after that. Um or someone was gonna get moving from the back anyway. But yeah, look, Walter came first up. Um and Patrick tried to ground his back. It was a bit tight driving with himself and Darren. Um Darren tucked back in, went it went the short way around in the end got out at the right time and, and really breezed down the top of the straight dynasty ran well for a second you know it's only four year old horse second run of the year but um yeah no re- re- really good run by roman it looked really impressive you know a couple of runs last year he looked electric and uh, and he picked back up here again today and yeah it was um it, it was a good run and everyone likes to see johnny bournes do well too he's he's one of the characters that's been that's been around racing for a long long time so obviously people like to see them them lads get a winner so best of luck and i'm sure they're gonna have a bit more fun with this horse over the course of the season yeah as finbar said to me today he says there's, there's very little mileage on this horse so uh it's good to say it's good to see finbar is the new regular driver awesome dude he's gonna get a good tune out of the horse and a good bit of fun from as well as johnny as well as johnny and darren there they've teamed up there at the start of last year and it was quite a successful partnership and best of luck from going forward and yeah, looking forward to the next week's race. The fourth race in the card was the was the higher grade trot. We had four gone to post here. BB Darpe, Eddie Marceau having a second run for Martin Lochran and um, Martin Joe Mon, Ducio and Crazy Boy Noche. So as I get rolled away here, Sean, you walked your way to the front with Ducio. Um, Martin was away in second where Eddie Marceau down the way in third. BB Darpe, Charlie was on the outside of Crazy Boy Noche. Not a whole lot changed as uh, for the first half a mile. You said just sensible fractions on front without going too fast. Um, not a whole lot changed. Charlie dropped to the rail as they head around the driving range for the second time. Race kind of stayed as they were in the foil. Um, first to fourth, as they got down to the mile, still no one was particularly keen to move. You were getting your own way on front, Sean. Uh, when they got to the bottom of the back straight for the last time, heading for the mile and a quarter mark, down and produced BB on the outside. Asked him to go about his business. Uh, very quick turn of foot BB has. He cleared at the paddock corner. Went to put a few lengths in the field straight away. Um, Eddie Marceau caught my eye a little bit running on for a second. Looks like a nice horse uh, for the lads going forward. I think they're going to have a bit of fun with him. And yeah, look, another an, another winner for BB there. Pet a second of the season, I'm sure. It's a um, good, good, good start to the season for uh, for, for Morphy's and fair play to them. They deserve deserve success they get to do an awful lot of work and an awful lot of traveling with, with the horses and uh yeah good good winner for bb there pet owned in part by keith mcglion as well and he won like an odds on favorite should win yeah mark this is another one of these races there where i get beat and I have to watch it and talk about it it's great but uh i don't know if anybody's seen the week previous stu show was very very aggressive in on the second line and just left this race behind them in the warm-up and uh, I try to try try a new bit on him this week, and I tell you, I had a lot more control over him. You know, it, there's definitely no way I would have got him down to such slow fraction before. A little bit disappointed he didn't kick on for me further. You know, the last half, you know, I thought he would have kicked on, but unfortunately, he's just gonna have to up for a little bit different tactics next week. But uh, Bippy Tarpe, holy heck! I thought it was a dart coming from Conley heading to Malahide. Like he was flying, absolutely flying. You know. It, you know, I had a quick peek. Nobody was there. I said, "This is grand. If I make this corner here, I could be home and hosed here." <laughs> Next minute, here's the green man flying by me, hundred mile an hour. But uh, yeah, it's great to see Bippy, Bippy like that. You know, he he kind of ha- he hit a bit of a dip there last year for a while, and the lads got him going towards the back end. But uh, as you say, it's great for the lads and Keith as well. Keith's a good man into the job. Um, it's great for him. Eddie Marceau, Mark, as you say, was very eye catching there. You know, he looks a big. Big, honest horse, nice, steady, and um, you know he's definitely for me. He looks like he's going to be a nice, nice, good horse there for the Red John. Martin loves it down there. Absolutely loves it down there. As you say, Mark Bippy won it as a favourite should, but uh, Crazy was a little bit disappointing, I suppose you could say. But he can be a little bit hit and miss sometimes. But when he gets it right, he certainly does. So he's definitely one to watch out for. 
in the coming weeks, as well as Eddie Marceau, like he's eye catching there now. He um he can only get better, and it's good good that Martin Joe has got a nice one there. He's had a had a little bit of bad luck in in some of the sales before, so it's good for him. Best of luck to the lads. Yeah, like by bad luck in the sales, you mean he gets Epps from the Carves who wins the who wins the silver final of the all the trot championships. You know, that was some terrible luck Martin Joe had there <laughs> for um no look, this is saying saying connections, um saying connections as Epps from the Carves there with um where Eddie Marceau and oh, I'm sure I'm sure they're gonna have plenty of fun. But yeah, no, this was this was a winner for BB and and, and fair play. He was, he was in good nick and I'm sure he's kind of ready to kick on for the rest of the season now for the lads. Well, I suppose, Mark, when you put it that way. <laughs> it was five years ago, though. But anyway, yeah, best of luck to the boys. As we move on to the last race of the day there, Mark, you know, the, great, great, the last of a great F trot, which was actually won by your own Ella DeFoss there with Patrick driving. This um, race five went to post here. Jural Jaham with Luke Timlin. Set the fractions early, 31 to the quarter, 102.6 to the half, fastest first half of the day, and probably paid the price a little bit with this one. Um, super drive here by Patrick, I thought. You know, he was slow slow away with, his, with Ella, and um, you had to mind her away with the fast, faster fraction set in front. The minute he caught up with the field, as the field was coming back to him, with his forward momentum, he kicked around forward and uh, got the jump on Abrano. Um he crossed over to the lead, just turning into the last half, just just before the winning post. Uh, unfortunately, Gerald de Jaham actually made a skip here, which hindered the poppy delay on An Aram. Aram, he was returning from an 18-month spell in the paddock. It's good to see him back for the Gilligan clan. Um, but as I say, yeah, El de Foss and Arbano pulled right, right about 10 lengths clear away from these two. Good driving here by Billy too. You know, he saved his ground. He knew Ella the Foss was, was running on her last half. Waited to have one good cracker around the la on the last straight. Fortress couldn't get there. Um, Ella the Foss went on to win by a head. Good here, I suppose, by the two lads. Two chop, two chop drivers here as well. You know, you could see the new whip rail coming into effect here. And, you know, they, they both got the best out of their horses without, without having to exaggerate their strikes and raise their elbows and this and that. What the lads love, all those buzzwords. But, uh, yeah, good race. Well done to the lads. Also, our first win of the season for Mark Haynes Colors. First win for a couple of seasons for Mark Haynes Colors. <laughs> they didn't have a winner last season either. Yeah, no, um, yeah, it was great, great to get that win on the board. Orella, look, she, she, she was, she, she raced really good last week to finish second. Um, we we're fairly sweet on her coming into this race. We fancied her, um. We had a few quid on, and thank, thankfully, thankfully, it paid off. I was a little bit nervous. Um, I was a little bit nervous for the last quarter because our band was traveling very, very well, and uh, and looked really dangerous around the corner and down the straight for Billy. Um, you know, Pad Pad Grecken chatting to him after the race that he that that he was just keeping Ella in our comfort zone. We kind of have been driving a slightly more like that. Um, to kind of the back end of last season and this season, and it seems to be paying dividends, but. I thought a really good run from our band. It was a, it was a great solid servant of a horse. You know, thirteen years old now and still, still um, still running really really good every week. He raced very good last week from Martin Locking after a skip at the start, and yeah, um, you, you can be sure that you can be sure that um, our, our Ram's gonna come on a little bit from his first run too. So, yeah, it was it, it was great to get going. And like you said, there, if, I actually noticed that was with a lot of the races watching back at the videos that um. Watch back the videos that a lot of the drivers were, were getting the best out of their horses without having to get get stuck into them. I suppose is something you could say, and it's maybe it makes for a little bit of strange watching there. Like I think maybe the the fourth race or the third race where there was four or five coming down the straight together, and a lot of the drivers didn't look like they were doing a whole lot. But yeah, just adhering to the new rules, and I'm sure it's something that we're all going to get used to going forward. Cheers, everyone, for listening to the first podcast. Back we'll um. With this new format, we'll get a bit sharper with it again. We hope you's we hope you'll enjoy listening to it and we'll maybe start getting some comments from um winning winning connections, trying as drivers owners over the next uh, couple of weeks going forward and hopefully add to it again. Cheers everyone and best of luck this weekend coming.